Hello, I'm David Taston with 90 at 9, brought to you by interest.co.nz. This is where we get everything you need to know in 90 seconds at 9 o'clock, with news that in business pullbacks on investment spending is causing havoc amongst Japanese machinery manufacturers. But first in the US, we should note that mortgage applications fell last week. In Canada, consumer inflation vanished in July. In fact, they recorded deflation for the, from the prior month. Japanese exports have continued to drop sharply in July, even though the rate of fall is slowing. There was a recovery in shipments to China that helped cushion declines of exports to the Europe and the US. And the value of the exports fell 19% from a year earlier, continuing steep falls, especially for vehicles. The drop was, however, about expected. And Japanese machinery orders are still falling sharply. They were down 23% year on year in June and are expected to be down 21% in the July to September quarter. Export orders are down more, about a third of this on this basis. It is very grim for capital goods manufacturers, especially as analysts had expected July data to show some gains. But in China, they're reporting growing tax revenues. They're up 4.3% in July over the same month a year ago, a quickening pace. This is clear evidence their upturn is underway. And staying in China, the massive Three Gorges Dam has reached record high water levels as torrential rains caused heavy flooding upstream on the Yangtze River. No reports of damaged dam integrity yet, but any failure will threaten commerce along the country's longest river. The mighty Yellow River is also in massive flood. And Australia's trade troubles with China will be an intractable problem for them. China is the destination of almost half of their export trade, a dominance that is strategically unnerving for them. China has fierce leverage there. In contrast, China takes only 28% of our exports. The US Treasury 10-year yield is up one basis point to 0.68%, and the price of gold was very volatile overnight. After yesterday's $23 rise, it has fallen $38 today to $1,968 an ounce. Silver, which didn't rise much yesterday, fell in sympathy, down 1.1% overnight. Oil prices have little change today. They're still just under $43 a barrel in the US, and the international price is just over $45 a barrel. And the Kiwi dollar rose sharply and then fell back sharply to 65.7 US cents overnight. Against the Australian dollar, we are firmer at 91.4 Australian cents, and against the euro, we're marginally up at 55.6 euro cents. That means our trade weighted index has firmed to 69. I'm David Chaston. That was 90 at 9, brought to you by interest.co.nz.